Genesis chapter 27, verse 41. I am excited about Brother Calk coming tonight. He's texted me, and he's excited as well. And so we want to be looking forward to that. You never know when God is going to do the miracle that you need him to do. Yes, sir. You don't get to choose when he does the miracle. Any moment, it can just happen. I'm telling you, that's why every opportunity that you have to be in his presence, it's a good thing. Amen. And I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord and what I feel in this house. Genesis chapter 27, verse 41, the Bible says, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. I want to talk to us Talk to us this morning on this topic. The power. Everybody say the power. The power. Of forgiveness. Of forgiveness. The power mm-hmm. of forgiveness. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for those watching online. I thank you for those that have come in the house this morning, God. Amen. I pray, God, that this word would help somebody that we would leave. Amen. That we would leave with a fullness and a completion in our spirits today, Jesus. And I thank you for it. That fruit, God. We thank you for it today. And the church said, in Jesus' name. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Amen. Let me say this. I, I, I know a lot about a lot of you. Amen. October will be two years. And with our relationship, I've known some things. And y'all know some things about me. And uh, I just want to say I never preach what I know. And I want you to know that. That's something that my pastor has instilled to me from the very beginning that I ever got my call. He told me, he said, never preach what you know. He said, just preach what God gives you. And so if I'm up here preaching about something that we have talked about or something that you're struggling with, I want you to know that idea didn't come from me. It came from God. Amen. And this is God's work. This is God's house. This is all God's words. And so be encouraged that God knows where you're at. Amen. And he always has the perfect word to help you in a time of need. Amen. The power of forgiveness. Esau is in a, a state that many of us has been because we know what it's like to be cheated or done wrong or be hurt. And uh, if you've lived any time, then you know what it's like to be hurt or betrayed or have your trust broken. Uh, But Jacob had stolen his blessing. And through the help of his mother, Rebekah, we know the story how he dressed up like Esau. He made his voice to sound like Esau. And Esau come back to a brother that had in many ways cheated him or hurted him or hurt him right or wrong. Esau felt betrayed. And in these type of situations, revenge is a comforting thought to those who feel that they have been done like Esau has done. That's our fleshly nature to get revenge. And Esau says, after my father is through mourning, then I am going to slay my brother Jacob. I'm going to get revenge on my brother Jacob. Amen. Here's the thing about revenge. You don't have to take it because vengeance belongs to God. That's right. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Now, this is tough. It's one of these moments where you have to turn the other cheek. It's very hard. I'm not preaching as if to say this is something that is easy to do. But I promise you, if you will take the high road every time. God will take care of who he needs to take care of. Amen. And uh, those of you that have children, sometimes it's common for one of the children to be mean to the other children. Amen. And when that happens, we correct the child that needs correcting. The same with God. If your brother or sister or somebody is being mean to you or does you wrong, you don't have to correct them because God will take care of the correcting and God will take care of the avenging. 
Amen. The Lord will take care of punishing. You will not have to because that is a weight and a pressure that you don't want to have to bear. Amen. It's just easier to forgive them and love them. Now, I was planning on preaching another message, and uh, I had it put together several months ago. And I haven't got a fresh word, so I naturally went back to my message, like we do. But I knew deep down, God's probably not going to let me preach this. And last night, God began to talk to me about forgiveness. And I know I'm on it today because God kept me up most of the night with this in my spirit. Matthew chapter 5, 23, it says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother hath ought against thee. Now let's look at that word remembrance. Because if you think about things that are very traumatic in your life or a big events that was very hurtful, you don't have to really have to remember it. It's something that is very easily to recollect. But several years ago, me and my wife were on our way to vacation. And uh, I believe we were going to... Uh, was it the Mall of Americas? Where is that at? Wisconsin? Minnesota. And uh, I, on the way up there, I don't know why I started doing this, but I started praying this prayer like, God, whatever you got to do, save me. Like, I don't want to go to hell. Amen. Just don't let me die lost. For some reason, this, this got in my spirit. And I begin to... Um, Try to imagine eternity. And folks, if we just think about eternity, your mind can't really comprehend eternity. But if you think about it for a second and try to just comprehend it for a little bit, you'll scare yourself. If you think about going to a place that never ends, good or bad, you know, something that never ends, that, that's scary. I mean... You think about it, a never ending, like there's never an ending. And, and I begin to think about that and I begin to like scare myself and it was ruining my vacation. And uh, I, I say, God, I, I begin to, God, I'm sorry. God, if I've done anything, I, I, I'm sorry. I cleanse it. I get it under the blood. And, and God began to deal with me about people that I had issues with or had issues with me. From my childhood. And I had to like really think and remember. It wasn't something that was just easy to bring back to my mind. And there was this uh, two young men that I went to Christian school with. And my eighth grade year, they put me in a Christian school. Amen. To try to help my life because my seventh grade year was pretty rough and I was heading in the wrong direction. I don't know if putting me in the Christian school was the right thing because... They uh, wanted me out of the Christian school once I got there. But it's like Bible college. You don't go to Bible college to get in church. Amen. But I went to Christian school and I was a bully to a couple of the guys there. And I made their life really bad. And uh, that's not easy for me to say. I'm just telling you what God, the journey that he took me on. And I was, 2015, I was probably 25 or 26, and God began to deal with me about that. Things that I thought was not that big of a deal, I had to like remember. And you know, I started feeling bad, and I reached out to both of those young men, and I apologized to them. And do you know, prior to that apology, we essentially had no relationship in fact, there was really dissension between us because of how I treated them. But after I apologized to them, do you know that since then our relationships have grown stronger? And one of the men is preaching now. And a couple weeks ago, he was to preach his first message. And I reached out to him and was encouraging. And his wife told me later, he said, who would have thought Brandon Rankin would be encouraging me now? But I want to tell you there's power in forgiveness. Yes, yes, yes. If you remember things that you may be holding things in your spirit that happened to you as a child. That you don't even really realize the magnitude of how it's affecting your adult life now. Past relationships. 
past things in your childhood, I want to tell you, if you were really remembering, go back. And you will forgive people. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. What God wants to do is release you from that hurt. He wants to release you from that pain. And he wants to reconcile you back with broken relationships. All right. Amen. And there was this one gentleman. There was three people that I had to make right with. And as of right now, yesterday and today, I have been thinking... Is there anybody that I'm at odds with? And I can't really think. And, and I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. Somebody may just not like me because of me. And, and, and if I don't know about it. I can't help that. But I'm talking about. Is there anybody that. I actively have odds with. And I cannot think. And I don't want no enemies. I don't want that. And. Uh, but there was a. Uh, a, 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 a minister friend of mine that came in Tipton several years ago and bought a car. And the car deal went south, not with me, but with my management. My management said something that was not truthful to him. And it went bad, really bad. Well, it, it got really bad. And it even caused some issues between him and I. And I didn't feel like I was in the wrong because he had kind of went off on us. And we made it right. But I didn't feel like I was in the wrong. And several years later, God started dealing with me about that. And I reached back out to that person when God started dealing. I said, hey man, I want you to know I'm sorry. If, if I've done anything wrong, I please forgive me. And he said, hey man, no, I don't hold it against you. And it may be something simple. But I'm telling you what I felt when I reached out and said, hey, I want you to forgive me if there's anything. I'm telling you, there's nothing better than that feeling of no issues. There's nothing better than that feeling of I've made it right. Because on deathbeds, if people have the opportunity, they want to make things right. Yes. Amen. They want to make things right. But the Bible says, rememberest. So that's a word that I felt triggered in my spirit. Maybe there's things that you don't even realize because it wasn't a huge deal to you that you need to go back and think about, hey, did I treat this person right? And if you didn't, it's just better if they're still alive to try to make contact, just contact, just to ask for forgiveness, even if you was not the one that was really in the wrong. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remembers that thy brother hath all against thee, all against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way and first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. That word reconcile, and I want to talk about this because I feel the Holy Ghost has been talking to me about this word. Basically, it means to restore back to friendly relations. Um, it doesn't always fix the differences. And that's something that we have to take into account because uh, reconciliation doesn't mean that we agree on everything. But it means that we move to friendly re relations and we move past those differences. And we don't allow those differences to affect how we treat one another. And how we love one another. And how we pray for one another. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because some of you have been done really wrong. Have been done really wrong. And you're not going to be able to fix and figure out everything that was done wrong. But with forgiveness and just saying, hey, we're going to move past this and we're going to restart. That's what reconciliation means. It's a moving past I know people still have issues, but I'm going to try to restore harmony, restore friendly relations so we can uh, dwell in harmony, a harmony or be together and not fight on the playground type of thing. Right. Right. Amen. Sure. And uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, I want to go back to half ought against thee. So if we slow down and look at this, let me explain this in the way God explained it to me. And sometimes I, I don't do a good job of this, but 
Um, when Adeline sometimes acts up and stuff and we have to correct her, uh, she doesn't really understand. She understands forgiveness, but she doesn't understand how it goes about. And I'll explain it to you. She'll do something wrong and we'll have to correct her. And then later she'll come to us and say, Daddy, I forgive you for having to get on to me. She says, Daddy, I forgive you. And this whole time, this is really, that right there is what God put in my spirit last night around 10 o'clock. When he gave me this message, I, I told my wife, we look and we laugh and it's like, I'm the one that needs to be forgiven you because you did the wrong. But is she really wrong? If somebody wrongs me, if a brother has awe, it, it didn't say who did the awe. It just said he has an issue with you. What if you caused the issue that he has with you? All right. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. He has the problem with you. And sometimes where we miss it is we get caught up on who did it first. Yes, sir. We get caught up on that, or or and I'm I'm preaching to myself too, or it's like I literally did nothing to you and you blew up on me. Well, if they're not willing to apologize and you really want to be like Jesus, then you're gonna to have to go and make amends, even though you was not in the wrong. You know what that will do? That will release them. That will release them. And so when my little girl comes up to me, and, and, it, it, and if you're going to be successful, really successful at living for God, there's a lot of things that you can't take personal. Right. You cannot take personal. People are going to be people. You are here for me to love. If you do something wrong to me, I still want to make reconciliation with you. That's right. And that's tough. But I'm telling you, you cannot repay evil with evil. That's right. no, sir. If they do wrong against you, you have to repay that with good. You have to still love them and pray for them and help them and say, I love you enough to overlook what you did. Because what happens is when you allow what they did to affect you, then that thing won in a sense because it affected you. Yes, sir. The only thing I want to be affected by is by the spirit and the presence of God. Yes, sir. I got to be able to minister to the person that has an issue with me. And I got to be able to minister to the person that does not have an issue with me. And the only way for me to effectively do that is to be gentle and patient and forgiving with everybody. And I've had people say, Pastor, you apologize a lot or you care a lot about. Yes, you're right, because I come out the car business and I know some of you have been in rough businesses, but it was a very hostile business. And so. Sometimes I say things and it can cut and I did not intend that. And so I go back and I, I, uh, I'm i like, this came out. How to, and and if, if I do not feel comfortable and I come to you and apologize or if I, I am just making sure. Because I would rather be sure because nothing that I say or do, my desire, I cannot have that effect how you receive the word of God and your ability to make it to heaven. Is that okay? Does that make sense? And when my little girl would come to me and say, Daddy, I forgive you, even though she's the one who acted out. She's the one who was doing what she didn't need to do. In that moment, I can't help but just get on my knees and just love her. And that is the atmosphere that you invite. When you... Ask forgiveness for somebody that did you wrong. You invite an atmosphere of love. You invite an atmosphere of peace. And that is what I believe the children of God need to be known for. And these are things that I desire. It's not things that I'm going to be perfect at because we're all human. But Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 says... 
Jesus says, for if you forgive men of their trespasses, I will forgive you. But if you forgive not men of their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And I, be I believe why Jesus was so big on forgiveness was that that's the least we can do. Because that is literally everything that he's done for us. That's good. He forgave us and he will forgive us multiple times. There's been so many times that I have fallen, so many times that I have failed. And the golden rule is treat others how you would want to be treated. Right. Yes, Amen. The Bible actually says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law of the prophets. That word others includes everyone. Not just the ones who we like or the people who we are friends with. Others is literally Everybody treat everybody how you would want to be treated, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance. And look, you are human. This is not something that you're going to be perfect on, but it can be something that you want to be perfect on. It can be a goal. Amen. Matthew chapter five, verse 44 says Jesus talking again. But I say unto you. Love your enemies. Why did Jesus say that? This is what I believe. Because the moment I love my enemies, they cease to be my enemy. Right. That's right. Now let's, let's slow down here for a second. That word, my. Somebody can look at you as an enemy, but you don't have to view them as an enemy. That's right. If you both view each other the same way, Chances of reconciliation is off the table. But the only enemy that I want in life is the devil. That's the only enemy I want in my life. We had a family one time at my father's church. And I was probably... Uh, Maybe I was 11 or 12 years old. I was friends with their son. And uh, there was an issue that happened, and, and they had to leave our church, and it wasn't good. And I saw, I saw him one day at uh, the mall. And uh, I preach on this quite a bit, but I, I really mean this. Uh, we don't love each other or talk to one another because we go to the same church. Amen. We don't. And I was 11 or 12 years old. I walked up to him. I said, hey, how are y'all? Kind of caught him off guard. And uh, they looked at me and I said, hey, I just want y'all to know we love y'all. And I miss Eric. And, you know, just hope y'all are doing good. And I, I was naive in the moment, but I was being serious. I missed him. I was talking to God the other day. And uh, can I slow down and just talk to you this morning? Yeah. I was talking to God the other day. Everywhere he goes, it seems like he has issues with the church. And, uh, you know, sometimes if you want to help people, you got to call and tell them the right way, even if they don't like it. Right. Yes, sir. And I, I called him. I, I, I messaged him. I said, hey, man, this is my number. He came to our church for a little bit. Had a great, great uh, family. Uh, talented kids. Great kids. Very successful guy. And uh, stayed at our church for a little bit, and uh, since then he's hopped around a lot of other churches, and uh, he's back without a church, and he was kind of putting on Facebook how he doesn't understand and all this other stuff. And so I said, hey, man, just call me. Let, let's talk. And so he called me. I said, why do all these churches have issues with you? I just point blank asked. We don't need issues. No, sir. Issues can be eliminated. But they have to be worked on. Right. Yes, sir. You can't ignore the clank in the car. You can't ignore the shaking in the car. You got to stop, bring it to a shop and say, all right, what's wrong? Because I want it fixed. Right. That's right. Yes, sir. And uh, we got to the root problem of what his issue was. 
But I told him, I said, hey, I said, y'all came to our church for a period of time. I said, you left. I said, you know what made me sad? He said, what? I said, you didn't tell me bye. You didn't tell me bye. Now listen, if we're really a family, come on. If the will of God changes, the will of God changes. But don't leave without telling us bye. It doesn't have to be that way. No, sir. People can leave. When you leave a job, you put it, you leave on good terms. Don't burn bridges. Don't burn relationships. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he said, well, brother, I'm sorry. I said, I'm not upset at you, brother, but I love you, man. I said, I want you to make it. I said, you know what made me sad? I said, I saw your children last year at Texas Youth Conference. And he said, yes, sir. I said, I asked them where they were going to church. I said, your son looked at me and said, well, we're been going to a church for a little while in Houston, but I don't know how long we're going to stay there. I said, sir, that makes me sad. I said, that makes me sad. Because what happens is when problem comes in, instead of dealing with, you're not careful, you just run from it. Right. And then you have a life where you're just running, running, running. But the Bible says that God eventually came to Jacob and said, it's time to go back to the land of your kindred. Yes. You're going to have to face Esau at some point. Yes, amen. Amen. And so I, I really hope this is okay. When I start talking about this stuff, sometimes it gets real quiet here, real tense. But this is not something that has to be tense. Well, sir, come on, Pastor, come on. It's just people loving people. That's it. And I want you to know, I am for you and I love you regardless. There can never be a moment that you and I are enemies. Right. You're not Russia and I'm not Ukraine. There ain't no reason to bomb one another. That's right. We have to love one another and help one another. And if there are issues, we got to come together and talk about it and forgive one another and move past it. Amen. The differences may not always be resolved, but that does not mean that we cannot still be brothers and sisters in the same church and move past it and still see revival together. It doesn't mean that. And so this gentleman, the problem is, he had a problem with how they took up the offering. And we talked about that. And I said, why can't you just be okay with it? I said, I said, you can be such a benefit and such an asset to a church. I said, but you're letting something that you don't agree with. Look, we are not always going to agree on everything. But that does not mean that we can't still be unified. That does not mean that we can you know, we can't still come together. That does not mean, you know what I mean? And so yes, these yes. things, it's like just because there are differences, just because I may say something or do something you necessarily do not agree with, does not mean that my and your relationship has to be severed or suffer. The rope has still got to stay attached. Amen. And so, I'm just talking to you what I feel like God has put on my spirit, okay? That's good, Pastor. That's good. But I want to tell you today, if we are going to be like Jesus, we are going to have to forgive one another and be, and be quick to forgive. Right. Amen. I'm, some men, some women, y'all know people that are really quick to forgive, like they don't want to hold no grudge or nothing. Let me tell you something. It is tough to hold a grudge. It is tough to hold a grudge. And it's like, I'm one of the top people. I'd rather just get it out, get it out of the way. Hey, let's get it out. Let's move past it. I love, we love each other, you know. And let's go on because we have an agenda or a goal that we have to meet together. Amen. Yes. And that is the most important thing that I believe. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's tough. But if you're going to be the children of your father, which is in heaven, that's what you got to do. 
And Jesus said, For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans do the same? Amen? You can love those who hate you. It's tough. But it can be done. And it's amazing. God brought this back into my remembrance last night as I began to think and ponder on this message. Um, Jesus at a point on the cross that he has been beaten more than any man has been beat. He's been tortured more than any man has been tortured. I know it was God, but he came in the flesh to know what we had to deal with. That's right. I mean, and this is what he says. Father, forgive them. And this is what I felt like God wanted me to ask us this morning. Who is your them? Who is your them that you need to forgive? Because forgiveness does not make you lose. Because sometimes we get caught up in, I want to win. Like, I was right. I told you I was right. But true forgiveness Put you winning every time. Even if it makes you appear like you are wrong. I apologize. I'm sorry. But who is your them that you need to forgive? Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee. Until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Does anybody know how much that is? 490. Now, Jesus was not saying after the 490th time, you don't have to forgive him anymore because all of us have repented more than 490 times. And he still forgives us. But he was using a figure of speech. He took what Peter told him and he multiplied it. And like it's going to be a lot more than that. But really it's unlimited. Come on. It's unlimited. Now look I understand that we are human. Sometimes forgiveness. Does not mean I have to be your best friend. Okay. It does not mean that. And I'm very careful here. Because we've all been hurt. But when you release them. And you reconcile, you take away that where if you see each other in the mall or you're able to talk to one another, you're able to be in the same uh, group with one another. I believe you have fulfilled your obligation. You have removed it because you can't fix people. Because sometimes they have issues that keep in their spirit that keep causing them to repeat these things. And you can try and try and try to fix them. But the only person that can really fix anybody is Jesus Christ. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. But until 70 times 7. Now let's look at Luke chapter 17 because the Bible says pay attention to yourselves. This is Jesus talking in a different uh, version than the King James Version because it's easier for me sometimes to understand it in different versions. Jesus said pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. That doesn't mean hit him. If he repents, forgive him. Look what he said in verse 4. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I'll repent, you must forgive him. Amen. That's tough right there. Seven times in one day? Now look, I would even struggle with that. And I'm the pastor. Because after about two times, if we're not careful, we're done with them. Right. And the only thing I'm asking us, along with myself, is, is that really biblical? That's all I'm asking, because I want to go to heaven. I, I'm not claiming to know the answers. That was the question. Can a person get to a point where we're completely done with them? I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. But does true forgiveness... Alter the relationship so I say I forgive them, but I treat them differently after. Not sure. 
Amen. I don't claim to have all the answers, but it's something that if I'm not right in, I pray, God, help me to get there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because there are areas that I'm not right in. I'm not perfect on that, and neither of you. But that does not mean that that does not give us God. If this is what your word says, help me to get there. And when future things come that otherwise you would just say, I, I'm not dealing with you. You have the opportunity to show them what being like Jesus truly is. Yes. And that's tough sometimes because a lot of times after they do us wrong, our human nature is to treat them differently. But think about if God was like that with us. I'm just, just asking a question. Psalms 103.10 says, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. In other words, He could have treated us differently because of our past failures and mistakes, but He chose not to. And the greatest power that God has and His commitment to not treating you differently and loving you is the fact that He chooses not to remember your past failures and mistakes. In other words, He could if He wanted to, but He doesn't hold it against you. In other words, when you repent, God says, I'm going to treat you as if you've never done that. And this is the question. Are we there that we can do that for somebody who sins against us or hurts us? Just a question. Come on. Because I don't believe, and I'm preaching to myself too, I don't believe that God is super pleased whenever we ask Him for forgiveness and He does not treat us differently, but somebody else asks us for forgiveness and we alter our relationship with them. Now, I'm not saying... If you have a partner or a spouse or somebody that you date that's abusive, you have to go back and be in a relationship with them. That's not what I'm saying today. But I'm saying you can forgive them of that abuse. You can release yourself from that and say, you know what? I'm going to start over clean. And I'm going to be a better person. And I'm not going to allow what was done to me affect me. Ephesians 4, 32 says, And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted, these are all goals, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Colossians 3 says the same thing. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, or an issue against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Let me tell you this quick story here. I've got a couple of quick stories here I want to tell you. There was a gentleman one time, not naming any names, that he didn't like me. And I knew he didn't like me because every chance he got, he took a shot at me. Does anybody know what it feels like to be there? Mm -hmm. Didn't matter what it was. Well, I knew what it was. It was a... A disrespectful spirit that his mama had toward the ministry and it was passed on to him. I know what it is. It's okay. Yeah. But I made up in my mind when I felt that spirit I'm going to be nothing but kind to him. Because this is what happens. When you respond when they come at you and you respond, what you do, you bring yourself down to that level. And they won. They won. But if you kill them with kindness, they don't know what to do with it. When they attack you and you say, brother, I love you so much. You and your family's going to make it. I'm for y'all. That's right, man. What am I supposed to say? I hate you? <laughs> No. No matter. I love you. I'm for you. And do you know what? Things that could have turned into some really big issues were put out. You know why? Because of how I responded. Now, Brother Rankin, have you always been good in that area? No. Sometimes I didn't even realize what I said until it came out of my mouth. And then it's just out. And you're like, uh-oh. And then you're trying to take it back. 
You know, if you're not careful, it's like, you know, the, get a, a tube of toothpaste and get all the toothpaste out. It's, it's easy to squeeze it out, but then try to put it back in there. <laughs> Power of life and death is in the tongue. And I'm just telling you, no matter how mean this somebody is to you, if you look at them and say, I love you so much, I'm really proud of everything. I, God's going to do something great with your life. I'm for you. I'm telling you, you will watch that spirit just wilt. Come on. Because it can't do nothing. When evil comes at you, you overcome it with good. Yes, amen. Amen. And, and, and you got to know it when those situations are coming at you. You have to know it. You have to know yourself and say, hang on a second. This is a moment where my flesh is not going to take the right road. So I need to recognize that moment and I need to speak light and positivity and love into that dark situation. Yes, sir. And I'm telling you, if you do that, you cannot lose. And that family that when I was 11 years old, remember that story, that family that I told about? They called my family that day. We're talking about the relationship was really bad. And it got worse after that. I'm telling you, it's really bad. But they called my family that day and they said, hey, we saw your son in the mall. And we just wanted to let you know that anytime Brandon wants to come over and play with Eric, we would love to. Just something simple. And just that little thing just changed the whole complexity and the atmosphere. And some of y'all have small kids. I have small kids. You know, sometimes with kids growing up, sometimes these kids are going to be mean to one another, okay? That's just what kids do. They're going to be mean to one another. They're going to say things they don't need to say to one another. I want you to know, I want you to know something. I have seen parents get crossed because of kids that can't get along. I want you to know I don't want that for us. Right. Is this all right? Yes, sir, man. If my little girl does something mean to your kid, you need to know that I am not upset at you and I don't want you upset at me. And if, we, and if it does get to that, we need to stop and say, hang on a second, these are kids. That's right. That's right. Is this all right? Yes, sir, Pastor, man. Kids are going to be kids, but I'm telling you, there's nothing that our children should do that would cause dissension between us. Because if we allow that dissension to come between us, what is that showing our children? Because they can tell. You do not, I'm going to say it one more time. You do not have no enemies in the church. That's right. I don't care what they've said about you. I don't care what they've done to you. You do not have enemies in the church. The only enemy you have is the devil. That's it. That's right. In the church, you have people that are for you. We are here, here to create an atmosphere so that you can grow in, and that's it. God needs a body. That's what it means. God does not need a country. He doesn't need uh, the country, and, and we have our own countries, and you have your country, and I have. No, no, no. He needs a body. You know why? Because if he is going to birth spiritual babies, all he needs is a body. And when we provide him that body, and we provide that fruit of the Spirit, that love, that nurturing, that growth atmosphere, I want to tell you, God will grow people. And God will mature people. But you take children out of atmospheres that are not good at home. And, I, and let me say this. The church will not fix everything, but it will make your home life better. Yes, yes. yes it will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But children that come, and some of, you, some of you have told me about your childhoods and different things. I want to tell you, God can fix it. But what I am saying is, is that... In the church, there should not be chaos in the church. No chaos. There should be no divisions in the church. Paul had to deal with this in Corinthians. Now look, I understand that there are going to be problems. I understand that. But problems don't have to stay problems. 
Problems can be fixed. Issues can be taken care of. But it takes somebody that says, hang on a second, something's not right here. I want to get help. I want to get fixed because I want to unify with my brother and with my sister. Now, I'm almost done. Give me a few more minutes. 11, 11. What does Jacob do? He has to flee. He's always on the run now because he stole the birthright. He has to flee. He stays with Laban for a little while. God still blesses him. But God says, return to the land of thy fathers and thy kindred and I will be with thee. When God tells him to go back to his own land, he starts being fearful because he knows that Esau wants to kill him. Because his mother, Rebecca, told him that. And let me preach right here for a second. And I want to tell you, I'm not getting on to anybody this morning. I want you to know that. I want this place to be a place of encouragement and growth and love. But if somebody... Is talking about somebody else. Please don't, don't tell that person. And stir it up. Please don't. Amen. Pray for them. Just pray for them. There's some situations. That I can hit head on. Or I can say you know what. I'm just going to pray for that. And I, I, may, I tell the other person. That's just how they are. Love them past it. Because I can't fix everybody. You can't fix me. I can't fix you. But God can fix us. But sometimes we have to work. But Rebecca tells Jacob, her son, Esau wants to kill you. And now he's fearful of that. Amen. But you know what? When Esau is coming towards Jacob, he has 400 men with him. Esau is in preparation of if he's going to kill half my people, the other half will be saved. He starts compartmentalizing. The Bible never says after Esau originally said that, when his messengers came back and said Esau's on his way with 400 people, they never said that Esau was mad. Jacob just assumed that. You got to be careful with assumptions. If you are going to assume, assume they love you. All right. It's like people like, well, they don't like me. How do you know that? Did they tell you that? No, I can just tell. <laughs> I can just tell. I'm sorry, that's not a gift of the spirit. That's not a discerning of spirits. Oh, sir. Because if you're not careful, you know, the enemy can tell you that so-and-so don't like you to try to cause division. He's smart. I can just tell. Well, hang on a second. If you're going to assume the bad, counteract it. Say, that's an evil attack. I'm going to counteract it with good. Walk up to them and say, thank you for loving me so much. <laughs> You'll be surprised what happens. All right. It's like natural. You tell somebody that you love them, they just naturally say, I love you too. There you go. If you're going to assume it, assume the best. Why assume the worst? It's going to work out. Do I know that for sure? No. But I'd rather think it's going to work out and be surprised. Come on. Is this all right? Yes, sir, Pastor. Amen. Amen. If you're going to assume, assume they love you. Assume they're for you. Assume they're not against you. Assume that they want to see you prosper. Assume that they want to see you. And when other people get elevated and other people can't be used, if you can't be happy for them, the issue is not with them, the issue is with you. But guess what? I still love you despite your issue. Because what is the body for? To create an atmosphere that you can grow. And so instead of leaving because of the issue, why don't you let God grow you out of the issue? The church is an incubator. If you'll stay in it long enough, it'll hatch you into something that you never thought you could be. That's right, amen. I just felt my help right there. Yes. Amen. I want to tell you, what did Esau do? Esau embraced him. That's what we are here to do. Brother Rankin is not here to fix all your problems. I don't have the answers, but I know God does. 
I know God does. But I want to tell you, I want to embrace you. That's what I need embracing. Uh, amen. I, uh, Esau ran and fell and he embraced him. You know it's easier to embrace versus to not embrace? It's easier to help somebody than to not help them. It's easier just to embrace them. It's easier to love them. He fell on his neck and he kissed him. I'm not telling you to kiss nobody this morning. But I want to tell you something. This idea, this idea that good doesn't take work. Stop working at the good and the bad will naturally come. These things have to be worked at. You're going to hear it a lot. I hope you don't get tired of it. But Brother Rankin loves you regardless if you are at his church or not. All right. Yes, sir. That's good, Pastor. Yes, sir. Why do I say that all the time? Because I know what it's like when people don't work at being good. Naturally, the bad just takes over. But I want to tell you, it's easier to love than to fight. It's easier to smile than to frown. Do you know it takes more muscles to frown than to smile? You know that? God intentionally said, I'm going to make it harder for them to be upset. That's good. It is hard to be upset. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And look, I, I want you to know something today. I, this, I'm not preaching... Well, Brother Ray, there must be a lot of problems why he's preaching like that. No, it's not. God told me to preach it. I've been honest with you from day one. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hold back. This is who I am. Yes, sir. I'm saying don't hide who you are because you're scared. You've been uh, in an atmosphere that people has judged you. You don't have to come to the church and be like that. You can be who you are here. Amen. Is that all right? Yeah. Hey. Well, it's up in here right now. It's easier to forgive versus to hold on to bitterness, resentment, or anger. I'm telling you, it's easier. You, I mean, there's times maybe if, if you've been in any relationship long or anything. You know, sometimes, sometimes you're, you're at odds with one another. It's just a part of it. But tell me the feeling that it's not. Come here, Sister Rankin. You can bring my baby too. You cannot tell me that the feeling of the problem and not having it resolved is better than. That's the greatest feeling. Yes, sir. That's the greatest feeling. Why not take advantage of it? Well, they're going to view me as weak. So what? When I'm weak, who's strong? Yes, that's right. Amen. When I'm weak, who's strong? So when I appear weak to the enemy, do you know who's really the strongest? Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. It's really almost done. I know I just said this. It's 11 19. Well, I'm getting longer winded the longer I pastor. <laughs> I, have a, I have an evangelist tonight, so I got to get out both services this morning. I'm just picking. <laughs> Last Sunday morning, I preached an hour almost, but that night I only preached 15 minutes. So I let you up, you know. I tried to even it out. <laughs> Joseph had every reason. Now, I'm almost done, but I want to re, I want to re go back to this point. If you don't hear anything else in service, listen to this. Because God told me this one day. The reason why God did not give Joseph the kingdom immediately. Joseph's brother sells him. He goes to Potiphar's house. Wife accuses him. Goes to the prison and all this other stuff. He had to walk through some hard places. The reason why God did not give him the kingdom immediately is because if God would have, he would have killed his brothers when they came instead of forgiving them. Because there wasn't enough time. So God had to work that out of his spirit. And so what happens when his brothers finally come? Joseph tells them, come near to me. This is an atmosphere of the church. Not just this church. There's a lot of other great churches. 
We need to be near one another. We need to be near. That, that spirit of love, that spirit of meekness, those things, those are near. That's why Jesus kept his disciples close to him. That's why he says, I'll never leave or forsake you. Yes. There was a time that me and Adeline went through a little period where she thought he was going to leave her everywhere. I don't know. I'll be going somewhere, and we're about to go. She said, Daddy, are you going to leave me in the truck? I said, no, baby, why would I leave you in the truck? We go in the academy, we're walking out. Daddy, are you going to leave me in here? But you know how sometimes your kids are lagging. You're like, come on, I'm going to leave you. <laughs> no, you're not meaning me anything by it. But the reason why God wants you to know, he's near the brokenhearted. He's a friend that sits closer than a brother. That he's never going to leave or forsake you. It's because he wants you to know he's committed to you. And that he loves you. He's been near to you when you're bad. And he's near to you when you're good. And he's near to you when you're making it right. And he's near to you when you've been your farthest away. And God wants that same atmosphere in here. I believe that. And I want to tell you something. If me being hurt, if I get hurt trying to help you, it was worth it. All right. All right. If I lose trying to help you, it was worth it. If I look back and I said I did everything to try to help somebody get to heaven, and if you look back and you can say I did everything to help them get to heaven, it was worth it. Look at what he says. Come near to me. And they came near to him and he said, I am Joseph, your brother. See, we got to stay brothers and sisters whom you sold into Egypt. That's enough right there for some, me to get upset. Now, therefore, be not grieved. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to release them from that. Nor angry with yourselves. For you sold me here. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Joseph is saying, hey, lose the grief. Lose the anger. And then he went and he kissed all of his brethren. And he wept upon them. That's it. The power of forgiveness. Forgiveness will preserve life. You will keep them alive by forgiving them. That's why Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You have to understand sometimes that people are operating under a... They are operating the why they're operating because of situations and circumstances and spirits and stuff they're fighting. And sometimes they bite you because they're hurt. But that's why you got to remember what Jesus said. They don't know what they're doing. They've been hurt. I'm not going to hold it against them. Good. I'm going to forgive them. I don't know why you act the way you act. Sometimes you may not know the, the way I act the way I act. But I can tell you this. Sometimes I act because I don't know what I'm doing. But I still need a church body and family to say, hey, he's still a good guy. Yes. Hey, she's still a good lady. Yes, sir. She's still a good lady. Let's stand all over the house. Amen. No enemies other than the devil. Forgive. Forgive quick. In fact, Brother Cole, is it okay if I tell what I told you about you and Sister Tambry about it? And look, Brother Cole has uh, Sister Tambry's realized I'm happy for him, guy. Whatever, you know, I'm great. But I told him, I said, look, I said, don't create a relationship with her that if it doesn't work out, y'all hate one another because. There can be no room for that. That's right. And th that's what I'm saying. Like, don't create a relationship with people in the church that if something doesn't go your way or something works out, doesn't work out, that you hate them. Don't create that. We still have to coexist and love one another without any hate, any rivalries, any tensions. And that was mistakes that I made when I was a young man dating. How do you know you break up with your girlfriend and all of a sudden they hate you forever? They'll turn the whole city against you if you ain't careful. <laughs> and it's like, why can't we just be cool? We didn't work out. It's okay. You know what I mean? 
And that's what I want all of us to know. I want the whole city of Victoria, I want the whole world to know, hey, it's okay. I'm still going to love you and help you. There's no reason for us to hate each other. We got to love one another. Because why? We're identified by our love. They're going to know you and you're my disciples by how you love one another. Amen. We all love each other in here? Yes, sir. Amen. I love each and every one of you. Can y'all feel the love in here? Yes. Good. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and with these, I'm not trying to take us back to kindergarten or anything. Look, I know these are y'all are some great people. I know y'all have been getting this teaching for years and years and years. Great teaching. Brother and Sister Kai, they've done a tremendous job with y'all. But sometimes God wants to talk about it again. Go back in your childhood. Forgive some people. It helped me and it helped you. Amen. God, I want to thank you for your word today. I want to thank you for every single person that came, God. I pray that this word would help somebody, that it would grow somebody, God, and that we would all go grow stronger and more unified together. I thank you for it today, Master. I pray that we would leave in unity, God, and that we would leave in a completion, and that we would leave, God, with an encouragement. In Jesus' name, the church said in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're dismissing the fear and the love of the Lord. Let's remember, Brother Clark, tonight. Prayer 630 Church is 7. God bless you. You're dismissed.